Back when I was a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player, I remember this time when I played against a, a pretty popular player, and it was the first time I'd ever actually played against this guy before. And to this day, to this day, I still remember how he whined about every single card draw that he got and was just constantly complaining the entire game. And I just remember the whole time thinking, wow, this guy's a loser. Fast forward a few years and I was eventually doing the exact same thing except for with League. What's up everyone, my name is Doubtful and today I'm going to be talking about what led me to this point of being a toxic hardstuck diamond player and how I eventually overcame that to become one of the top solo queue junglers in North America. Um, wow, recording these intros sucks so I'm going to loosen up a little bit here. Uh, we're going to stop doing cuts for the most part unless I make any drastic mistakes and we're just going to run through this. Hopefully um, this video is going to be useful, maybe it'll you guys can learn something from my story maybe it helps you on your own journeys of overcoming your um emotionals and your emotions and your mental barriers yeah i'm gonna be misspeaking a lot i, I tend to do that but uh yeah i hope you guys find this interesting at the very least i'm gonna be talking over as you can see this uh high level challenger gameplay that i played the other day off stream uh the jacks in here is uh tf played too so uh, it was a pretty fun game and yeah hopefully you guys will find that entertaining um to keep me awake today, I've got this Starbucks double shot energy thing. I've actually had this the other day, and um, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, but it's also 8.47 p.m. Jesus, I am not going to be sleeping tonight. Um, but this is what I do for the content. So let's open this up and take a drink. <sighs> not great. All right, let's get started. Um, I should give some context first about um, exactly where I was when this whole me being toxic, whatever thing started. Um, initially, when I first started playing League, I climbed pretty fast. Uh, I actually climbed for, like from technically Silver 2 to Diamond 5 in like two months. Um, and that was me just spamming Rek'Sai when she came out and playing for like 14 hours a day or something insane. Um, you can sort of see why I had a mental breakdown later. But uh, yeah, so originally I climbed pretty fast. Uh, it wasn't too long after um, after I hit Diamond 5 that I eventually hit like Diamond 2, Diamond 1 area. And I pretty much got stuck there for well, the rest of the year. Like it was over a year that I was stuck in that um, that ELO. And uh, I went to some uh, some pretty dark places um, during my, my hard stuck time uh, for several reasons. I had a lot going on, or not a lot going on in real life is probably a better way to say it. Um, so uh, let's talk about that. What actually led to me being to toxic? Uh, and I think that's important to identify why you're actually toxic. And I think it can be different for lots of different people, but generally it's probably all sort of circles back to the main thing. Um, for me at the time, League was like literally the only thing I had going on in my life. I had uh, isolated myself from all of my friends and I was just putting everything I had into League of Legends because I was trying to go pro at the time. I had decided to go pro in League of Legends when I was silver too. Um, yeah, I'm kind of an idiot. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that was my life, literally just League of Legends. Um, I had let myself go. It was like for the first time in my life, I was actually like pretty overweight, um, like 40 pounds heavier than I am right now. Um, and yeah, it was pretty bad. I, I, again, I didn't have any friends. Um, I didn't have a job. I had literally nothing but League of Legends in my family. Um, but I didn't really talk to my family. Um, so it was pretty much just me and League. And as you can imagine, that's a, that, that's a pretty, pretty bad place to be. Um, and so these uh, games that I was playing, you know, it's like, at the time, I had this idea, this crazy idea in my head that if I hit Challenger, suddenly I'd have like offers from teams and people would want to like scout me out and put me on their teams. Um, fun fact, that never happens. That's not actually how it works. You don't hit Challenger and people are suddenly want to pay you money. Uh, so sorry to break anyone's hopes there. Um, but yeah, I thought that if I could just climb the ladder that I would be ch um, Challenger and I it would solve all my problems in life, essentially. Um, and so 
that's basically like my entire hope and future were resting on all of these solo queue games. So you can imagine the sort of mental weight that was just added to these games. Like I needed to win. I needed to climb to get better and to be better and to fix my life that was in complete shambles at the time. And I don't know if anybody else can relate to that, um, but it's it's a dark place to be and I'm kind of making light of it right now, but um, if you are sort of struggling in a similar situation, feel free uh, to like message me on Discord or something and we can talk about it because there's another side of that. I'm, I love my life now and uh, even just like league stuff entirely aside, it has nothing to do with the fact that I hit Challenger, like life is great. So um, yeah, if you are struggling with that, feel free to message me. Um, you're definitely not alone. So moving forward, um, essentially I had taken over, or I removed all of the other pillars that I had in my life that are like supporting me. Um, and so like basically all I had was League of Legends and like when I would lose games or if I would have like a, a bad streak, I would lose that pillar and suddenly I had nothing holding me up and I essentially felt like completely worthless and like I wasn't good at anything, like my, I was wasting my life and um, yeah, it, it, the, all that mental stuff is just what was going on in my head as I'm trying to, you know, play this very complicated game of League of Legends and trying to improve. And it, nobody can actually improve when they're in that mental state. It's just actually not possible. Um, maybe it is. I don't know. It wasn't possible for me, certainly. Um, so I had to get past that. I needed to get into a healthier mental state. I needed to um, build other pillars to hold me up. So like, I, I guess I'll get to that, but basically I was in a really dark spot and that is why. Um, now, sort of when I first realized that uh, what I had a problem, I had sort of one game in particular that I still remember to this day um, that really sort of set me on a better path. I would say it was the first of many dominoes. It's not like there's one thing that clicked and suddenly I was challenger and I was a nice guy or whatever. Um, but I, there was one game in particular where uh, sort of my toxic tendencies got brought to the forefront and I realized that I needed to change, some, change something. And I should say, when I say that I was toxic, I wasn't like threatening to, you know, hurt anybody or anything like that. I wasn't that kind of toxic. It's like the, you know, games are going bad, FF at 15, um, open, soft int kind of toxic, you know. Um, I think I got lever bustered uh, a few times around this area. Um, but yeah, so the game that really changed everything for me, I still remember it. Uh, I had Geronimo on my team, the streamer Geronimo, if you know him. Um, he was uh, he was autofilled to mid lane or off roll mid lane, whatever. I think he was in his promos too. And I also had an Aatrox on my team in the top lane. And I'd played with Aatrox a few times before. Um, didn't really think anything of him one way or the other, just, you know, somebody who I knew, was familiar with, uh, whatever. And f for the record, this was probably season six? No, season five. This had to have been season five. Um, yeah, season five. And the game um, didn't go super great. Uh, I think, I, I can't even remember exactly what happened, but things were going bad. It looked like we were going to lose, and I started getting tilted. And I remember I ganked... Um, I ganked top lane, and the Aatrox didn't follow up on the gank. I don't know if it was a bad gank or what. For whatever reason, he didn't follow up on the gank. And I remember just being so frustrated and so tilted that I was just like, screw it. And I just essentially, I'm playing Rek'Sai at the time, obviously, because it was a Rek'Sai one trick. I just follow this guy, uh, the enemy, into, under his turret, just like auto attacking him as Rek'Sai, and I just die. So essentially, like, pretty, pretty, pretty hard soft inting. Um, and I remember uh, the whole time Geronimo was like trying to like he was saying you know don't don't forfeit we can still win whatever whatever whatever, um, and yeah I had mentally forfeited a while ago and we did end up losing that game and I remember after I did that soft int I remember Aatrox typing in chat still remember this he said um, something along the lines of uh, doubtful I've played with you before like this isn't you you're not like this. Um, and oh my god if you ever want to manipulate somebody this is like the best way to do it it's like um wow did that make me feel terrible um because it's like it's sort of like like it's like holding up a mirror to yourself you know and like seeing like what you're doing it like humanizes everyone in your game and you're just like wow i am a a piece of crap um 
So that that sort of uh, I didn't feel great about that, but you know, I had already into the game was already over, whatever. Um, but I remember specifically after the game, uh, for whatever reason, I decided to go to Geronimo's stream and see how he took the whole situation. And I remember he wasn't streaming when I when I first looked him up, um, and I was like, oh, maybe he wasn't streaming. And then I I go to his stream and I see he actually ended his. Um, ended his stream after the game and you know when you go to somebody's vod it starts it from the beginning and i remember the beginning of drawn was vod for that day um he was just like he had this he was super happy and positive he was like today's gonna be a great day we're gonna win some games whatever 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 and then i like i skipped to my game and he's just like mentally defeated like completely depressed i go to the end of the vod he's like i'm just gonna get it off you know i this this dude's day was ruined and i was just like and obviously, you know, there were other factors of that, probably. I, I didn't watch the whole VOD, but um, in my mind, I was like, wow, I just ruined this guy's day because I wouldn't play this game. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I don't know, that really stuck with me. And I was like, wow, I'm a piece of crap. Like, th I need to fix this. Um, what am I going to do? And so I wouldn't say that, like, after that game, like, a flip, a switch just flipped, and suddenly I was always a, a positive player and... And whatnot. I, I didn't suddenly like climb two ranks uh, just because of that game, but it certainly got these sort of wheels turning in my head and made me realize like that I needed to make a change. And so, I think maybe I took a course on like mindfulness from um, like Weldon Green or something. I think he was starting to become popular at the time, and that helped me a little bit. It helped me understand that like it's okay to have the emotions and you can see them and then you can choose to ignore them and stuff like that. I don't want to go too deep into like actual techniques of not being toxic because this that's not really what the point of this video is. Um, but <clears throat> so I messed around with that a little bit. Maybe it helped a little bit, maybe it didn't. Um, I, I think it helped a little bit. But um, the real sort of changing point actually was when I started to build these other pillars of support that I was talking about earlier. And the very first one that was the huge domino that really set everything going for me was uh, when I got a job. Um, who knew the whole time the thing holding me back in League was the fact that all I was doing was playing League. Um, so I happened to sort of stumble onto, I, I got really lucky and I got this office job, which I'd never had before. Um, I was making like $15 an hour filing and um, doing some other stuff, helping people or whatever. And, um, it might sound silly, but for like the first time in a while, I finally had like my own money. I didn't just feel like I was leeching off of society or whatever. And um, yeah, I don't know. I was helping people and I had sort of like a purpose in life outside of just playing League. You know, I wasn't just taking up space. I wasn't completely useless. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess I felt pretty good about it. And from there, I started... Um, it was just sort of one thing at a time. I was like, I think when I first started working there, I like only ate like McDonald's or Wendy's or something. And then eventually I was like, well, if I'm gonna be doing this like every single day, like I should probably actually eat something moderately healthy. Um, so instead I ate Chipotle uh, every single day, but I sort of worked the Chipotle menu into something that's kind of healthy. So, um, and I also, during this time, forced myself to quit drinking pop, which was huge for me. Oh my God, to this day I cringe thinking about how much pop I drank when I was playing League. But um, I forced myself to stop drinking pop, and suddenly I started losing a lot of weight. I started to exercise, and I just started to build up these other parts of my life. And so it's like, yeah, you know, I, I suck at league, but hey, I've got like a job, I've got my own money, I'm, oh yeah, paying off my crippling student loan debt. Forgot to mention that. Paying off my crippling student loan debt. Um, you know, I'm starting to work out, I look, uh, I look better, I feel better. Um, I started talking to my friends again. Um, and suddenly I had this other like form of emotional support. Um, I'm like trying to literally build these pillars, but it's like if one of my, my League of Legends pillar would fall down, like say I would have a, some bad games or whatever, it's like I had these other facets of my life that would keep my mental you know, in a, in a good place and it would help put things into perspective. And instead of it's, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm bad at League, but you know, it is just League, it's just a game, like, um, you know, it's it's it, it just put things into perspective. That's that's huge. Um, another thing that really helps put things into perspective is I eventually started reading, uh, which really just shows you really how much of the world there really is and how small league is in the grand scheme of things. And all of these things just help to like 
really just kind of turned me into an actual human being and um it took all of the weight off of these games and i no longer was um that worried about the outcome of them and i wouldn't get that upset in game and yeah it's it's kind of like that uh <laughs> that hockey is it a gif that the, the thing where he get the guy goes it's just a game you know um, that's sort of how I eventually felt, and I got, sort of got to this really great, almost like Buddhist-like um, situation where I just like, I don't know, Zen. Maybe Zen's a better word for it. I don't know. I just wasn't as stressed about the game as I had ever been, and uh, yeah, I was just enjoying it a lot more. Um, I stopped. That was the other big thing. I dropped my goal of going pro. Um, I didn't feel like I needed that anymore to save me. I was like, if you know, if if the whole league thing doesn't work out, you know, I'm I'm gonna be okay. You know, I've got money, I've got friends, I've got a job. Like I'm I'm still I'm gonna be all right. Um, so I I no longer had that huge pressure hanging over my head. And instead of playing league to go pro, I was just playing league because I liked league and it was fun and I just wanted to try to get better at it. Um, which is such a huge important mentality shift, at least for me. Um, that really changed everything. Um, so that's pretty much it for the mental side of things, how I sort of improved and got better at that. Now uh, I want to talk about the sort of how I made the really big gap. Um, so there was a while like during all this where I was like maybe masters or so. Um, the timeline gets kind of fuzzy in my head because this was like, what, four years ago now? But um, around some time when all this was happening, um, Ivern came out. Ah, Ivern. Apparently it's called Ivern. I've always said Ivern, so I'm just going to continue to call it Ivern throughout this video. And you guys are just going to have to cringe through that. I apologize. But um, Ivern came out, and uh, he was, like, not super popular at first, as you can imagine. Um, still isn't really popular today. But I remember a couple months afterwards, I don't know if I played against an Ivern or what it was, but I suddenly looked at him on Lolalytics the stat site and I saw that he had like a 56 or a 57 percent win rate which if you pay attention to win rates at all is just absolutely mind-boggling insane uh, so I was like okay I need to figure out what's going on here so I, I looked up whatever guides I could find and I, I tried to watch the good players and I decided to like hit the ground and just start playing Ivern and um, best thing I ever did for myself uh, Suddenly, I was climbing a, a lot faster than I had been. I think I, I hit like 200 LP Masters at one point, maybe. It still wasn't quite Challenger at the time. Uh, but yeah. And then I think um, they announced Challenger Jackets. That was the big thing. They announced Challenger Jackets. And so this was Season 6, I think, when they first announced Challenger Jackets. And I really, really wanted one. And, you know, I had given up sort of going pro at this point. Um, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. But I was like, wow, like I at least like if I never play League again, I want to have this challenger jacket to like look back on and be like, wow, I like I accomplished something like this could be really cool, like X amount of years from now. Right. So um, I tried to get that. I wasn't good enough. I was just not good enough to hit challenger and NA at the time. So I don't know. Maybe this is like scummy. I kind of felt scummy doing it at the time. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. But I moved to LAN. I didn't actually move. I changed servers to LAN so I could get the Challenger jacket. Um, yeah, that's what I did. So I went to LAN, uh, got Challenger, playing mostly Ivern. Um, I had like a like a 70% win rate or just something absolutely insane. That champion was just beyond broken at the time and nobody else played him. And nobody knew what to do against Ivern. You just would always win the late game. Just absolutely insane champion. And I ended up hitting Challenger uh, with a little room to spare, got my Challenger jacket. And then the next season rolls around and I switch back over to NA and I'm like, okay, um, I guess I'm still playing this because uh, I like League of Legends, I'm addicted. So I kept playing League, kept playing Ivern. And I think um, maybe the, the MMR, I, I had higher MMR because I'd been playing on LAN and hit Challenger there. So I think that sort of helped me, but also Ivern was just literally just insane broken guys. Um, so I ended up getting to like, maybe like 400 LP or something Challenger in NA. And I remember uh, certain people were like, um, calling me an LAN player and like saying I, I boosted from LAN or whatever, I don't know. Um, whatever that means. I mean, I was playing in an A and winning. Um, that's how I got 400 LP, but you know, whatever. Um, 
I eventually knew, though, that the day would come and uh, everyone would get nerfed and I would no longer be able to have my free LP and I would probably drop back down to Masters. Uh, but the funny thing happened, um, you know, months and months later when everyone finally did get nerfed and I was expecting to drop, uh, I didn't actually. Um, I, I went back to playing Rek'Sai and, you know, whoever else I was playing at the time, I can't remember, maybe Zach. Um, and I was still a challenger player. And that brings me to sort of my next point. Um, <laughs> breaking through the mental barrier. And I don't really know, maybe this is just only niche to me in this situation, but I feel like there's a way that maybe you guys can learn from this and make it ap applicable to your own situation. But I had broken through some sort of barrier where I looked at like the high elo, um, the big names in the jungle. When I maybe when I played against them before, I would think that they were better than me. You know that I, I would I would get beat pretty badly, and I would just think, wow, like these guys are just better than me. But for some reason, now after um, I had been challenger, I was like, you know what, I'm a challenger player. Um, instead of thinking like that, I would think, and w when I would lose to these these players, I would be like, wow, I wonder what I I wonder what I could have done better. You know, um, stuff like that. Like. Uh, in instead of thinking this guy's just better than me, like um, I'm, I'm never gonna be that good, I, which is just stupid thinking. Nobody's better than anybody. Um, instead, I just thought, how could I have beaten that? Like, what could I have done instead? And it, that might seem small, like even saying it out loud, it seems really small. But these just sort of like really small changes in mind shift can really, really have drastic um, changes um, in the way that you play and the way you learn and the way you think about yourself. And uh, through all of that, all of that to say that suddenly after playing with challenger players for so long, um, even though I no longer had the Ivern crutch, I was suddenly a challenger jungler. And that combined with all of my pillars of support, me no longer having the pressure of needing to go pro, just playing League of Legends for fun, I eventually became a regular challenger player, you know, I, I, ever since that time, um, that was season six, maybe mid season six when everyone got nerfed, I can't really remember, but I've been challenger ever since when I've been actively playing. Um, my peak since then was, I had two accounts in the top 50, one almost top 10, uh, and that was like in the middle of the season. And yeah, um, it's all just about the mental, just having those different pillars of support, realizing that the game is just a game, you know, and just playing for fun, trying to do better where you can, and not blaming your teammates, you know, just focusing on yourself and what you can do better. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, do I have any other notes that I, I wanted to talk about? Not really. I think I covered it all. Um, I know that this video didn't really go into specific points of how I stopped being toxic. Like, there are little mental tricks that you can sort of use to stop blaming your teammates and stuff like that. Um, so maybe I'll just throw in a bonus trick right here. Um, one thing that I would do is, um, you know, mute your teammates, mute your ping. I don't think, you couldn't mute your pings back then. Um, best update Riot's ever done, by the way. Um, but I would just mute my, ping, my teammates and I would just sort of imagine that they just were like NPCs essentially. Like I was playing like a game of uh, maybe like Civ or Fire Emblem or whatever, and they were just like pieces that I could control essentially. And it helps, it's weird that dehumanizing them actually helps, but it, it really does. Uh, there's this one quote, I should have had this prepared. Oh, what is that guy? Five laws of power, 40 laws of power, 40 laws of power, 48 laws of power. Robert Green, people, planets, quote. Let me see if I can find this really quickly. Hopefully you guys can just be entertained by the game or maybe I'll make a, a cut here in case I can't find it in a reasonable time. Something about the comedy of man? Comedy of man, planets quote. Uh, 
Oh, I'm gonna have to actually find this video. Academy of Ideas. I ended up watching this video uh, many, many, many months later. Um, that sort of reminded me of the idea that I had sort of had and developed to um, use to help myself get over this problem of blaming my teammates and stuff. I've got time to kill, right? I think this is like, this is probably super unprofessional, but I actually want to play out the rest of the video anyways. Actually, I think it's 28 minutes long. Where are we at? How long have I been recording? 25 minutes. Okay, I'm running out of time. I'm going to end up having to make a cut here. Uh, let's see. How to overcome the downward pull of other people. Academy of Ideas. Academy of Ideas is a really great YouTube, by the way. You should check it out. Um, a lot of interesting stuff on there. Good Lord Almighty, of course it's not going to load. He allows himself to be imp All right, I've just got to find the quote now. Not useful, not useful, not useful. Here it is. Wow, this is a long quote, so I'm just going to read it now. Interactions with people are the major source of emotional turmoil. But it doesn't have to be that way. The problem is that we are continually judging people, wishing they were something that they are not. We want them to think and act a certain way, most often the way we think and act. And because this is not possible, because everyone is different, we are continually frustrated and upset. Instead, see other people as a phenomena as neutral as comets or plants. They simply exist. Work with what they give you instead of resisting and trying to change them. Make understanding them a fun game, the solving of puzzles. It is all a part of the human comedy. Uh, so this is a really great quote that I love and is really applicable to League. Um, really, the, the big part is just accepting what they give you. You know, getting mad or upset about, you know, your teammate inting it's just not useful there's no point in getting frustrated like it is what it is you can't control it or change it you know you just have to accept it and work with what you got to play the hand you're dealt essentially um so that quote that that's sort of a concept that i i had sort of developed in my head not quite nearly as cleanly as that and then i saw that later and i was like yes like that is how you do this um so hopefully that quote helps you guys uh maybe i'll link that video in the description how to over overcome the downward pool of other people uh, really good one by Academy of Ideas. But yeah, guys, I mean, that is it. That's how I overcame my being a hardstuck diamond and I eventually became Challenger. Hopefully this video was interesting. Maybe you found something useful here you could apply it yourself or otherwise maybe it was just entertaining. Um, maybe it was a solid Rek'Sai gameplay that you got to see there. Whatever. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this, I've never made anything like this, so let me know if you like this. I have no idea what the reception is going to be. Um, but yeah, like, subscribe, comment, whatever. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.